Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Passionately Speaking. This is our weekly masterclass where we talk about advanced public speaking skills and how to move an audience and how to connect with our audience, especially in the virtual world. And tonight, we have a topic about the virtual world, and it's how you can be a better audience member in the virtual world. You see, we talk a lot about how you can become a better speaker in the virtual world and how you can master public speaking, both live and in the virtual world. But what about being the best member of the audience? You know, we often get what we deliver, right? And I don't know about you, but there's nothing better than having an audience member when you're the speaker looking out at gallery view or even live view and seeing that one person that's smiling, that's nodding their head, that's present, and you just immediately connect with them. And as a speaker, you want to go keep going back and looking at them because they make you feel good. They make your speech feel like it's landing. It makes it feel like it's all worthwhile. So how many of you would like to be that audience member? Yeah? Amen. Amen. So today I'm going to give you 10 ways that you can not only be that audience member, but be the audience member that speakers want to come back over and over again. So number one, the very first thing you want to do as that super audience member, and this is, again, we're talking about the virtual world, but of course, you'll do this in the live world, but that is coming uh, on time and or early. You see, we've all gotten a little lazy after being online for so long that we're late, and we have a few people coming in now a little bit late. If you want to be that desired participant, if you want to be that desired participant that all the speakers want in their audience, you need to make sure that you come on time and or early. Early, you could chit chat with the speaker, you could get to know them a little bit better, a little more intimately before they launch in their speech. So always come to these virtual meetings early or on time right? We're getting a little bit sloppy and a little bit lazy uh, about, about our time in these environments. And I see it on all meetings that I attend. So that's number one. Number two, and if you just joined us, we're talking about how you can be a better audience member in the virtual arena, how you can become a better audience member in the virtual world. Number two is speak to the speaker before the meeting right? Saying things like, again, when you come early, saying things like, oh, I, I look forward to hearing you speak. I look forward to your presentation. I joined this meeting just because I wanted to hear you. All of those are music to the speaker's ears. So give words of encouragement always to your speaker. Number three, participate and volunteer to be the co-pilot. Again, if you're here early, then you can ask your speaker, the speaker, whoever is speaking, hey, do you need a co-pilot? Do you need a co-captain? I'm familiar with Zoom. I can help you. Do you need some help with anything? People love it when you help them because it is a lot of work to do, especially if it's your Zoom room and you're taking care of everything. So it's always good to have a co-host. Um, CJ's always my, been my co-host. There he is. You moved around a little bit. CJ's always been my co-host and it's just a, you know, a godsend to have him here. Um, Ardina had did her very first webinar last Thursday. I don't know if any of you supported her and was on it, but she had a co-host, which was which, which was Angelique. So get a co-host. If you don't, um, you know, a lot of speakers won't ask for, for one because they're supposed to know everything and do everything, but you can offer and they will probably gladly take you up on that offer. So be helpful, be supportive. Number three. Oh, that's number three. Number four. Use body language, use body language as again, we're talking about you as a member. So be present, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, but be present with your body language as well. So if your body language is kind of like this turned away, you're not really present. 
if you're you know, looking down and doing something and busy, it's not really present. So make sure that your body language is showing that you are there. Smile. There is nothing better than I, I love than to look out in an audience and see my audience smile. And there's some people that just have a natural smile all the time. Have you ever seen that? It's like effortless and they're just like grinning from ear to ear, right? I love those people in the audience. And I always mention how wonderful their smile is and how I love, you know, love them being in the audience and they can come and be in any audience that I have. So smile more. Uh, make eye contact more with the speaker and uh, just, you know, just really have present body language. Number five, and that is be present. That, okay, one, you have to have present body language because this doesn't mean you're present. But the other one is just really be present, which means really be present with your listening, with your mind, with your eyes, all of that. Don't be present and have good body language, but then sit there and be on your phone. That's not being present. Listen, listen to the message. Because remember, that speaker is there to deliver a message that you probably need to hear. So make sure that you're listening. We cannot listen when we're multitasking to anything. It doesn't, it just doesn't go in at a deeper level. We think we can multitask, right? But you're losing something. You're missing out something. Um, one of the millionaires, Bill Bartman, he says, multitasking is multi-stupid, right? <laughs> so you're not going to get any smarter learning if you're not paying attention. So put everything aside, let it all go, and just be present for the presentation. That's how you become a really good audience member. All right, number six. We're, we're doing 10. Number six is to be silent. It's not a conversation. Now, when you come early and you're having a conversation with the speaker, that's, that's great. That's a conversation. But once their presentation starts, it's not a conversation. And I've been in speaking engagements, both virtual and non-virtual, where some of the audience members think that it's a dialogue and they're just going to have a dialogue with the speaker, right? Michelle's nodding her head. She's like that. It's like, it's not a conversation here. It can interrupt the speaker, interrupt where they're going, but it certainly interrupts the entire audience who may have been there in the zone and present. And all of a sudden, whoop, you know, you're taking them off track with something that's of interest to you. And most of the time, it's people do it just to get attention. So remember, a presentation is not a conversation. You come early, have a conversation, stay late and have a conversation, or even stay late and ask questions. Be, so be silent. Mute, mute yourself. Number seven, participate in the chat when asked to do so. Now, not everybody's not always um, interested in the chat. I don't like the chat to be going on if I'm doing a presentation because it can be a disruption. But when you're asked to do the chat, chat. So if someone speaker says, where are you zooming in from? Put it in the chat, then participate. If they ask, does anybody have any questions? Put them in the chat, put it in the chat, participate. So use the chat all times when asked, but don't become chatty Kathy in the chat and drawing other people away from the speaker's presentation. That doesn't make you a great audience member. It just means that you are bored or you're trying to distract the audience. It's no different than at a live event, talking to the person next to you. And again, now that person cannot enjoy the presentation. So be real careful about that. Number eight, curious. Curious in breakout rooms. Why do I say curious in breakout rooms? I don't know about you, but most people, I mean, I'm really up to here with the breakout rooms. And partly it's because most people don't know how to run them that I've been to, you know, networking groups. They don't set them up properly. They don't uh, give instructions and guidelines properly. They don't give assignments and roles uh, properly. So it can be a mess. So when I see a room like that, and if I'm a part of it, I quickly will, after that room, usually leave the meeting and not be in another one. 
So you want to come into the room curious, not like come into the room like, okay, I'm going to sell something or I'm going to tell people what I do and I'm going to get some business. No, just coming curious about your fellow breakout partners and just know that it is by no accident that you are in that breakout room with those two or three people and treat it like a pleasure, treat it like a gift, treat it like the, they're all celebrities that you need to know. They're all future business partners or they're all future influencers. Maybe they have speaking engagements that you could be in. Maybe they have stages that you could be on. Enter it like that instead of, instead of in your own head. And you will have a much better experience and people will remember you. Sometimes I go in like that and I'm curious and I'll ask a couple questions. And sometimes I never get a chance to introduce myself. And that's okay because I'm there to learn about the other people. I already know about myself, right? So I go and I want to know about themselves. Do they have stages? Do they are they a speaker? Do they need speaker training? I mean, I can find out a lot just by listening to them as opposed to letting them hear me. Does that make sense, everyone? So go approach breakout sessions with curiosity, like the curiosity of a child that you're really interested in these two or three people and you really want to get to know them. Number nine, ask for, um, ask supportive questions. All right, ask supportive questions. So, so many times I've been in these rooms and people will ask questions. Now, if you've worked with me at all, you know that I don't recommend Q&A sessions on live stages, but I still don't recommend them on virtual stages. I'd rather you use your speaker time to deliver great content and to have a close or a call to action or what I call the invitation rather than just, you know, are there any questions? But a lot of hosts, presidents, organizers, they will still have a Q&A no matter what. And always be, again, be that good member that has a question ready. We're jotted down during their presentation. Create one if you can't think of one, think of one, right? Ask them intelligent, supportive questions like, you know, when it comes to your field, what is the number one thing that you see people do? I mean, the people can answer that. What is the number one challenge that you always see? What are your clients always telling you that you've solved for them? So you could have that question in the back of your mind and be ready for any speaker and ask that question. And they will be delighted to answer it because there's nothing worse for a speaker than to have a Q&A session and have no questions. It's very, very awkward. Now I teach my speakers to, if they have to have that Q&A session or someone gives you that Q&A and you have no control over it, meaning you've already ended your presentation, but the host will say something like, oh, are there any questions for Arby, right? And I'm like thinking I've done my speaker time, I used it all, but they will insist. So if you don't have a question, if no one asks the question, then they have a typical question ready. And that's what I teach my students, have one ready. So a typical question that's asked me is, what do I wear when I speak? And just have one ready about your business that you've always, that's the same one that you don't normally share in your presentation. Have that ready and then again, as a member, as an audience member, have ready that question that you want to ask the speaker that, again, is supportive. Nothing that will throw them off, but supportive. Like, what do you see is your biggest challenge when it comes to help? What do you see is the biggest challenge when it comes to getting out of debt? What do you see is your biggest challenge? I mean, with websites. I mean, you could, whatever it is that they're talking about, you can use that question. They will love it and it will get the Q&A rolling so that other people after that will probably be, you know, think of a question or, or know that it's okay and it's safe to ask more questions. And number 10, 
always, always make sure that you're clapping and applauding after the presentation. So make sure you're physically applauding, make sure whatever, high fives, make sure in the chat you're putting great presentation. Thank you, Jackie. Great presentation and just, you know, some claps there. So really make your speaker feel good. So I want you the next time that you're on a networking event with a speaker or a guest at any speaking engagement, I want you to think about these 10 steps. And they're actually not steps. You don't have to do them all, but pick out five or six that you're comfortable with. I mean, I would always come early, always come early so you can talk to the speaker and meet the speaker and share with them, you know, good things. Share with them, oh, I came just because I wanted to hear you speak or whatever. And always be present, participate in the chat. Actually, I'm going to take it back. I want you to do all 10. <laughs> do all 10 because they're all good and they will make you the best audience member on the planet. Millions. Thank you, Jason. The best audience member. And when you're the best audience member, guess what? You will have created better audience members for yourself because it's the law of recipro reciprocity, right? given to others as you would have them given to you. It's the law. So when you're a great participant, you will just get great participants in your room when you speak. And that's what you deserve. Each and every one of you deserve that. So that's our lesson for today. So we're going to open up the call and we're going to go around the room. So please share any insights that you have. Share any speaking engagements that you have. Share if you've seen good members and audiences, if you've had experienced bad members in your audience as you were speaking. Maybe somebody was picking their nose, right? And it was distracting. I don't know. We've seen it all here. Believe me, we've seen it all. So we're going to go around the room. I just want to say hi to a few, a few uh, latecomers, and that is my friend Jean from Iowa and Dr. Love and Luana and Jackie and Jason and uh, I think and and Benita and I think we also are going to have Jean Reese come in here. So excellent, good job, everyone, for being here. All right, so let's start with Michelle. Hello, Jean. Hello, I'm glad you could join us. You'll have to listen to the recording though. I just finished. You get younger looking every day. What is that? What is that? Look at you. What are you, 15? You look so good today. It's that filter, right? The filter, I want one. All right, well, anyway, you look good. All right, Michelle. Well, great presentation as always. You are absolutely amazing. And it just blows my mind how you create, you come up with everything um, and just present it so well. So I would have to say my, uh, the, the one that really spoke the most to me is the people that use chat while the speaker is speaking and they're having those side conversations and it drives me crazy. And I love your analogy of it's just, as if you were in the room, it's like so perfect. And yeah, I, I wish people really realized how distracting it really truly is. So right. um, yeah. well done. I, I just love all those little tidbits that you gave us to be the best audience that we can be. Thank you. And, you know, in the beginning, you know, a year ago or something when everybody was doing this, yeah, it was kind of cute, you know, uh, but then yeah, it became, it got, to become a distraction. So the host, now, if you are speaking, your chances are going to be a co-host. So guess what? The host and the co-hosts can turn off the chat. If you go to your security button down below, now you probably don't see it, CJ sees it. Uh, you won't see it unless you're a co-host or a host. There's a little shield called security. You can click on there and you can click off chat. And I just tell people, we're gonna do a chat free. Oh, off chat. Right. So try to chat. You'll see you can't. So when someone's speaking, when you're speaking, just go and turn it off yourself. Don't even say anything. I mean, to the, you don't have to ask permission to the host. Just say, I'm going to turn off the chat. We're going to do a chat freeze because I want to make sure that everybody is focused on this message or whatever. Or don't say anything. Right. And then turn it back on right when right after you end. And then they can say, good job, good job, good job. 
All right. Excellent. All right. Next, we're going to Clemmy. Yeah, I uh, I agree with that chat comment, especially on the phone, because it actually blocks the presentation that I'm trying to see. Oh. And, and I'm like, all, all this stuff is going by. And I'm like, I can't see what I'm looking for. It, it makes me nuts. But the other thing is, you know, I get invited to be in the audience, especially if it's funny, because my laughter usually gets the laughter in the room rolling. So people are constantly inviting me like we need somebody who we know is going to laugh, but who's going to get the joke and and that gets the whole audience moving. So I like to do that. That's fun. All right. And, and um, as far as timeliness, I think like a new Zoom etiquette needs to be like shrinks like people should stop before the end of the hour because I have days frequently that are back-to-back -back Zooms and I'm either late, like it's either ending late, which makes me late to the next, it just, it just, the dominoes go through the whole day and it, and it's really hard to like, if, if the present presenters are not on time, then I can't be on, like, I don't know where to be. It's like, it, it just causes cognitive overload. Right. Yeah, that's that's a challenge that we all are facing. And I know a lot of people that just get off of Zoom a little early, they leave the meeting. And that's fine. But I, here's what I recommend. Never leave a meeting without telling the host or at least putting it in the chat. Because when people leave my meetings, I mean, it's especially my training meetings. It's like I'm like, what happened to them? You know, did they fall off? Did they drop off? So just out of courtesy, because you would, you know, a live meeting, you probably most of the time a live meeting people, if I'm speaking, will come up to me and say, listen, I want to tell you, I've got to leave early. Um, you know, I don't want you to think it's you or they have physically tell me, right? Dr. Renee always tells me, right? She's texting me. You might not see it, but she's always letting me know, right? So it's always a good, you know, good, um, I mean, if it's a 200 people and you don't know anybody and you don't know the host or the speaker, well, then that's entirely up to you. But if you know the people, you know, and it's an intimate kind of setting, you might want to tell people before you have to leave because for you to jump off, it's just a weird feeling. It, has anybody experienced that but me? Yeah, it's just kind of weird. You kind of go, whoa, yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Take it personal. I don't know. You know, why did they leave? Ah, now I'm thinking about them leaving instead of what I'm supposed to be thinking about. <laughs> you know, it's icky. <laughs> yeah. Icky. What, what, Dr. Love? What? Oh, I'm sorry. It's icky. Icky. It's just, icky. Did you? Icky. It's what? impolite. That's a good word, icky. How do you spell that? I C K. I don't know, but it's going to be my next book. It's like, like get out of an icky relationship. Feels, icky. It feels icky. Sorry. So, Clemmy, I want to come back oh. to you because uh, let me come. Let me uh, get it, go in order. But Clemmy, I want to come back to you because you said something about your laugh. So let's hear it. Oh, I can't laugh. Like I can't force it. You have to say something that makes me laugh. Oh, RB. Tell her a joke. <laughs> Tell her a joke. Tell her a joke. A joke. A joke. <laughs> You know, the thing, the thing, the thing, you know, we met in, in Susie's class, RV, remember? And, and one of the things Susie said about me is that I see what other people don't see. So like, I'm picking up the connections and like, I'm, I'm like, I'm right where the speaker is. Like, I know where they're going, like, and I seem to be there before everybody else. So like, I'm reacting before they might even know the punchline kind of thing. Okay, well, good. Well, I look forward to hearing you laugh. But we also have a competitor, and that is Jean Reese. And Jean Reese can laugh on command. So, Jean, unmute yourself and give us a good one. Unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Unmute. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. How's everyone doing? Hey! Hi, <laughs> oh, you are too much. How is everyone doing? One more time. Say, I'm doing good. Hey. Hey. Great to see you, Gene. Oh my God! Thank you, Gene. Anyway, Gene has a great laugh, and it is it is infectious, just like yours, Glenn. All right. So, good job. 
The laughter, I'm going to have to add that and add number 11 then, number 11. <laughs> Be a good laugher. All right, let's go to Alan. <laughs> <laughs> So but, I appreciate all of the Ten Commandments. Yes. The one that resonates with me most is come on time or early. Mm -hmm. That's because I'm always late. And I used to joke and say I'll be late for my funeral. And I hope that means I'll live to 125. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we don't know what that will look like in the future, right? But um. These are really great and I appreciate them and thank you for spending time to prepare them. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. So I want to encourage all of you to, you know, come to these meetings, not only mine, but all the ones this next week, this will be your, your seven day challenge to come to every zoom meeting that you have early, at least five minutes early. Even if you have to leave another one, Clemmy, you know, five minutes early, Get and be on early. Take advantage of that networking time, meeting the host, meeting the speakers, meeting the other people that are there early because they really do want speakers to be there early most of the time, you know, and especially so you can share your screen, test maybe your PowerPoint or something like that. So uh, make sure that, uh, that you do that as well. Okay. Now we're Tuesday. Um, Alice, we didn't, we, yeah, we, I did this on the call, but I have to share with you. Talk about a speaker rising to the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Last Wednesday I did, I was in charge of putting together um, an event for Habitat for Humanity in our Pomona Valley. I'm on their board. So they wanted to use my expertise to put on a virtual event, which I did. And I got the speakers and everything. And we're going through and Alice came as a guest and a couple other people. And um, and um, I could see that I the speakers were on time because they were all trained by me. They were on time. Everything was on time. And I was going to do a breakout session, but the the um, host decided to make it a webinar instead. So I couldn't do breakouts because there wasn't a meeting. So I had this time. So I called Alice up and said, hey, how would you like to speak? She's like here as a guest, right? Uh, but she said, yes. Because it was her audience, you know, because it was for homeowners, people that want to own a home. And of course, we had reciprocants of, um, of the homes, of Habitat homes that it was just, you know, just filled your heart. I mean, I was like in tears when these young girls were saying how they never had a yard before and they were out there planting flowers for the spring. I mean, some I've always been in a, in a house all my life. And so to have people like, share they didn't have a backyard or just something we might take for granted was really just heartwarming. So just want to say congratulations to Alice. She stepped up to the plate and gave a 15 minute presentation with only about a five minute notice. And that's what we're about, right? That's what this is about. So Alice, how was Thank that? Thank you for lifting me up. <laughs> how was that experience for you? Oh, it was wonderful. You know, it's a topic that's dear to my heart. I think, you know, housing and home is a human right. I've been in apartments and I've lived in houses. And like I say, I grew up in Grenada where we got together on the weekend. In fact, I had a picture of a friend of mine last weekend with the entire neighborhood putting down her floor. You know, they wow. were just passing, mixing cement and passing, and there was a line. And when she called me, she said, I'm making a huge vessel of food to feed everyone. Wow. That's coming together. So, That's so I'll share the picture with you. Oh, I would love to see that. Yeah. That's great. Well, again, thank you again, Alice, for rising. Thank you. Thanks it's for inviting me. You're welcome. It's always a good idea to... You know, if you do want to speak, you never know if you come to my events when I might pull you in. I've pulled in people, right, CJ? It's the last minute, you know? Uh, so it's always good to perhaps hang out with the teacher, even outside of this class. You just never know. And always be ready to speak, which you all are, right? You're always ready and ready always to give that signature talk. Yeah, that's cool. Amen. All right, let's go to Ardina. Good, 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 great. I definitely agree even with Alice. <laughs> I, 
I do. I, I come I come late to my meetings as well. I'm usually a few minutes late. So when you said that was number one, I'm like, boing. <laughs> <laughs> that hit me. That one and also, well, number two, you have to be early so you can speak to the speaker. Right, so, right. You know, we need both. So, I mean, I thought about the, um, the meetings that I go to even outside of this one. And it's a pattern, you know, I'm trying to get things done, but, you know, it can, it can be changed. You know, right. Well, and, and you're missing out because not only are you missing out on some quality networking time, but you're missing out on being visible in the top half of the screen. Yeah. Right. Which we've talked about. The later you come in, the more bottom you end up. So I want to be up top. I want to be in the speaker's view because I know they're going to be looking at the camera. So I want to be in their peripheral vision. You've got to get there early in order to do that. Yeah. Where am I at right now? Where do you see me? You're in the second row over to my um, left. Okay. The second row, not the top row. But again, because it's a smaller group, the more people, the smaller you're, you know, you'd be in the more on the, on the row. Right, right. I only have four each row okay. right now. So you're bigger, you're each bigger. Now that changes with a smaller screen. So if you're on a, if I was on a laptop, you'd all be smaller. Mm. Right? Yeah, if, that's what if I'm If I had a about. bigger screen, you'd be bigger. So like CJ has, how big is your screen? We're probably all gigantic, this CJ, right? <laughs> all right, anything else, Ardina? And just a reminder, I did mentioned that I did have to leave a little bit. You have early. to leave early. Yes. And it's always good here because I will put make sure you get a chance to share before the end of the hour if, okay. you're, if you do have to leave early. So thank you for that. And right. Arvina did a great job doing her very first webinar on Thursday. So let's give her a big hand. She had 12 people there, which is unheard of on your very first without really having a list so good job Ardina thank you thank you so 50 percent of well set up meetings for 50 percent right right so thank you <laughs> you must add a good mentor <laughs> I, I wonder who that person is <laughs> all right thank you Harvey. Like Blake Shelton, anybody watching The Voice? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. My friend Jean's always like, <laughs> if I get tired of The Voice, tired of watching, I'll call Jean. Well, Jean, who won? Because she's like two hours ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> Last night, they had a big, you know, 10-year celebration. Ever. I only watched the first hour, and then I was like done. Um, because I really like the competition, the singing. Uh, so um, next next month, I guess they're giving them a week off. So it was a good thing to have. But it was good to see a lot of the old coaches um, that I forgot were even on the show. Ten years I've been on. Wow, that's a long time. All right. Speaking of unique voices in this room, the voice goes to CJ. Hello, hello. <laughs> Uh, good stuff today, RV. I did take down an, a number 11th bonus. You did give us a bonus number 11, and that was always announce in chat if you need to leave early. Don't just there drop out go. of the call. There you go. I'll add that. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. And I was uh, laughing when you were talking about that speaker that volunteers that Q&A session, whether you wanted it or not. Uh, it made me laugh when you said that because I've I've seen that happen before, or those groups where I, under your tutelage, have said you know combined it into the one thing, and they still want to add that Q and A, and and that made me think of uh, what you're saying in here of ask supportive questions is exactly the opposite of what you talk about happens uh, or can happen when you open yourself up to that Q and A and you get that person that almost wants to take you down with their question. Yeah. You know? Uh, and and I and you've got an excellent method of overcoming that and redirecting that in the moment, which I'll leave as a mystery for those who haven't uh, learned that. Which is that's right. An excellent that's technique. There's a, there's several of, of those classes in the passionately speaking. It's how to handle a heckler. But one of the things, just to answer that <clears throat> question, is most of the time you have to think psychology wise why is that person person speaking why are they speaking up they want to be heard they want attention they're spoiled they're bored whatever 
They want attention. You can't let them take over your speech. So you simply say, that's a very good question. I'm going to cover that in a little bit. I'm talking about not after your speech. I'm talking about during your speech. That's hecklers. After your speech, they don't heck you. heckle you. There's no benefit for them. There's nothing in it for them. So they want to do it while you're speaking. So you just say, you just say that, you know, you're obviously, that's a great question. You're obviously very, very um, knowledgeable about that subject. You know, we're going to talk about it a little bit later. And when we do, it, would it be okay if I called on you then? Right? And they go, yeah. And then they, you don't call them. Simple. And then they're the first ones to come up to you at the end of your speech and go, why didn't you call on me? <gasps> I'm so sorry. I forgot. What was it that you want to share? Right? And then they just tell you. And then, of course, they don't. They're disgusted. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but you're just nice and sweet. And, you know. Anyway, it's a great technique. Use it if you need to. Just have that in your back pocket. All right. Thank you, CJ. All right, let's go to Ruben. Welcome back, Ruben. I think Gene is supposed to be next. Who? Gene is supposed to be next? Yes. Well, okay. Somehow you move screens, and I will move. I will move. And Gene, you go next. Okay. Well, thank you, Ruben. Um, I, I do want to let you know that I need to leave at five till for another Zoom. So, um, so that's why I will disappear. <laughs> um, I, I too, like Michelle, um, really had that Velcro attachment to number seven about um, when asked to chat, chat, um, but don't become chatty Cathy, drawing people away from the focus. And um, um, I have been a part of a Zoom, like a weekly Zoom for about, I don't know, I don't know, a bunch of weeks. And, um, and there are always a lot of questions. There's like 200 people on, on there. And, um, and it was really engaging and interesting chatting going on and questions and then people were helping each other and that kind of thing. And, um, and you just, you, you had to either focus on the chat or the speaker and the speaker was so engaging too. So it was very difficult. And so I just, um, I uh, typed in the chat and asked if they could allow time and a reminder at the end to save the chat so that we could keep all of that conversation without being distracted. So they began to do that, like, you know, just a couple of, couple of minutes before, you know, please say, save the chat and, you know, tell everybody goodbye. And so they stayed on just an extra minute or two. So I think that was, that's something really helpful that the host can do. Right. And, um, and sometimes I'll just save it periodically anyway, throughout the time, just in case, like today, um, I forgot to, to save it at the very end. I think I had about half of it saved, but somebody else, you know, sent me the whole, chat that they had saved so uh, mm. yeah anyway that's my input all right thank you yeah so there you have it i mean distracted should i do the chat or should i listen to the speaker again mm -hmm. if you're the speaker you don't want, really want that so turn off the chat mm -hmm. just tell everybody we'll turn it back on after the presentation and then you won't have that temptation and you won't have feeling like you're missing anything or trying to double double uh, chat, double um, multitask. But I want to say something, something about the chat. So remember that if you go out, now the host can always save the chat. The host, it should be turned on in your background, in your setup that, that it's an automatic save. So you don't have to worry about it as the host. But as a guest, anytime you go out and come back in, the chat's not the full chat. It only starts saving from the time you jump in the room, which is another reason you want to be early. So you don't miss anything because a lot of people, you know, chat right in the beginning before things get started. 
All right. So again, get get there at least five minutes early. Thank you, Jean. I saw your I saw your husband Jim in the background. He still has his hair. I love it. Hi, Jim. How you doing? Hi. How are you? Good and you. Good, looking good. You get younger every day. Look at yeah, you. Right. Or at least hairier. <laughs> you look like a musician. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> you looking good. Looking Thank good. Thank you. You too. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Now, Ruben, are you ready? Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Let me check in. Uh, Dr. Renee, do you have to leave early? Yeah, and I, feel, I have some comments about about what everything you shared today, and I had an event that happened yesterday that I want to share. But have Ruben go. Could I go after Ruben? Would you mind, RV? Would that be okay? Not at all. That'll be. So I'm asking permission. Thank you. I'll 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 wait after Ruben. Thank okay. you. All right, but you have to leave early, right, Doctor Love? Yes, I'll I'll make it, but I'll make my comments very quick. Oh, but all it's right. pertaining to everything you talked about today, it's all okay. very good. We uh -huh, want to hear you. that. Thank you. Okay, Ruben. Yes, uh, today I was in a meeting, a Zoom meeting, and like, just like you said, I was uh, I was trying to just uh, go out without saying anything, but I felt guilty. <laughs> so I sometimes, you know, I, did, I don't want to distract, so I don't want to put it on the chat, but today I decided I'm going to be nice. I'm going to say that I had to leave early, so I put it in the chat. So I think that's a good reminder. And also sometimes, you know, I uh, I have been multitasking. I had to confess. <laughs> hey, <Mommy. laughs> and, I, and I think these are good tips to share with uh, wherever you participate because I think a lot of a lot of members are multitasking while they're listening and and, and I think it's, it goes well both, both ways because sometimes you are sharing and you don't want them to multitask. And you are doing this, this, the things that you don't expect them to do. So yeah. I think uh, it's a good, good uh, lesson to be practicing and also to share with your, whatever you are participating. Good. Thank yeah. You. Thank you, Ruben. Yeah, if you, if you multitask, you're the one that's losing out, really. And yeah. um, why be at the meeting? You know, you, you wouldn't go to a live meeting and then, well, some people might, and then they go in the hallway and they spend the whole time on the phone, right? You see that? It's like, why did you even pay to come and come? Just go, go do what you have to do. Get out of here. Um, so sometimes it's better, you know, not to be there and be a distraction. Um, but I'm glad you you thought about uh telling them you're leaving early. I get, or if you come early, that's another time, another benefit of coming early. Cause then you can just verbally say, you really only want the speaker and the host yes. to know that you're leaving early. Everybody else really doesn't have to. It's okay if you tell them, but it's really those two people. So come early, tell them, and then you don't have to feel <laughs> guilty. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Ruben. All right, Dr. Renee. Yes. Oh, Arby, everything was excellent. Everything you said was right on, spot on. Uh, and it, 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 it triggered a lot of things that has been happening this past year. Uh, first, regarding the chats where we participate, I agree. What I don't like is when somebody's putting in a long monologue, a big block of words. It's like, what the F are you doing? It's so irritating because everyone's trying to focus and then something pops up. This long thing, a block of letters. I do this. I do solar, blah, 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 blah. I do this and this. And it's, all, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want them. I don't even want to go next to them because all they would do is blah, blah, like this. Try to, it's a hard sell. Just put, yes, yes I do solar. It's, it's, it's healthy for the world. And this is my number. This is my name. You know, something simple. But when they do this long block, it's a hard sell and it looks like they're desperate. So I just want to share that. And so a lot, many times those people who are like that, uh, you know how people have a pattern, then they'll interrupt the speaker and then they'll go into this long thing, my experience and blah, blah, blah. They don't get to the question. What is the bottom line? What is the question? And then what happens is they, they hog that space. And then that the speaker only has so many so much time to answer that. So the people behind them trying to ask the question. So here's what I've done, um, RB, when I've been asked to speak. I will ask the moderator to filter, ask everyone to ask the chat or to email you or to Zoom or to text you what is the question so that they don't take a bunch of time 
about their experience and love and uh, by boy or boyfriend or, or the story because it takes up the time for the other people who want to ask a question something may occur to them oh when i was little blah 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 we don't need that what's going on now Are you what's going on with your husband what's going on with your boyfriend or girlfriend whatever that is the other thing is that i have said i do exactly what you say um rv i finish on i start on time i i i end on time by the way i apologize for being late today normally i'm never late so i i, I have to early. yeah i'm always early like 15 minutes as soon as my yeah. alarm goes off at quarter four i'm here but <laughs> i don't say anything so uh, what I've learned is that is uh, is that I will give the the moderator and I call that the moderator who's running the show and it's their show, their stage, five questions. If there's crickets and there's nobody saying anything and all this time is allotted for me for the Q&A, which I don't normally like, uh, I'll ask her, here's the questions and she knows already or he knows to ask questions so it'll prompt. Uh, some people in the audience to ask a question. I always, I do my very best to not listen to, to have people ask a question because it goes into the story versus what is a right. the tight, tight, uh, uh, what is a sound bite? What is a question instead of the story and they're crying and blah, blah, blah. I don't, nobody cares. It's just hogging up time. The other thing is muting participants so that you don't hear the background and you don't have them butting into your, to your um, speaking because it's, your stage of that a lot of time. Does that make sense, RV? Yes. yes. Okay, so I tell the moderator to mute everybody except for me, and you tell everybody to have you on the on the big screen part. I forgot that word, that you're uh, the spotlight. keynote. Spotlight. spotlight, thank you. Spotlight. So I tell the moderator that because I follow you. And um, the off the chat. Um, oh, thank you, RV. <laughs> um, the off the chat, you and I were on a Zoom call the other day, and the speaker was boring, talking about finance. And so oh, I God. saw you chat and then it was shut off. And then I said, how come I can't do this? I know because the moderator who, you know, uh, turned it off. So they followed what you do. So then you and I were texting back and forth. So, uh, so that was a good thing because yeah, we were kind of giggling and we, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, the other well, thing. Oh, yes. Learn how to be a good speaker. Oh, yes. Yes. To a speaking snob. It's OK. It's just that person wasn't trained. And uh, we could tell. Exactly. The other thing, very quickly, yesterday I did a restaurant opening. My husband, Jim, uh, is a restaurant, as a consultant for business. So this was a big restaurant, the first one for COVID that was opened up this yeah. year. Okay, Bottom we'll line, yeah, they, they asked, okay, they asked me to introduce the councilman and the mayor's office. Uh, they, I wasn't expected to do that. I was the event planner. So they handed me the microphone and I'm, oh, that was like a split second. And I just said, yes. Okay, good. I'm complete. Thank you. Good for you. Good for you. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Woo. All right, let's go to Jackie. Jackie, you're up. Well, usually I'm always early, but today, oops. And guess when I came in? I came in right when RV said, don't be late. <laughs> ah, well, that was still early. <laughs> yeah, you, you are always on time. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody. I'm just saying. <laughs> It was, it was just funny. <laughs> it's like, ooh, busted. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, really enjoyed the presentation today. Uh, always good information. I would like to give this list out to some people that I know. So um, maybe I'll do that. My difficult thing, since we've learned how to do good breakout rooms, are bad breakout rooms. And I just want to shake people and say, stop, you need to structure these things. It's horrible. Yes. Please don't do this anymore. So um, breakout rooms are a challenge. And then I have some really exciting news today. Uh, here we go. This is it. It's the real deal. It's done. Yay. Yay. <laughs> it's not a cardboard copy anymore. It's a real book. And um, the audio is in the works and will be coming out this week. I actually recorded my own audio and that has been a trip to do. It is, it's a challenge. I uh, not been on top of mind because of what's been going on, but um, yeah, it's a challenge. It's different. It's different than speaking very. and it's different from writing. It's right in between there, trying to read your book. Very different. Yeah, very challenging. Okay, thank you, Jackie. And go ahead and put it in the chat how people can get your book. This is monumental. Good job. All right, Jason, you're up. 
I hope Jackie caught that millions banner. Um, I wish you real truly wish you well, Jackie, on that book. Congratulations. Uh, and definitely I'm looking for the audio version. Uh, I also wanted to piggyback on what you said um, to a point that um, with respect to the, the list that RV gave us, I too am taking, uh, I took notes on that because I wanna pass this along to other people and whom I have Zoom calls with. Uh, I think this was um, just like important etiquette or certain protocols we need to really practice. Uh, and I think that having this list right now, as well as the recording to refer back to, will give me something to add when I go to future, you know, Zoom, other Zoom calls and see how much of all what you shared was, was uh, that what you shared with us today, RV, is practice. The last thing that I want to do is I definitely want to take you up on the challenge, RV, about uh, being on time uh, for uh, the upcoming, um, you know, our upcoming Passionately Speaking calls. Uh, because I'm really, two things that show up right away was that first um, is that I have this internal conversation going on in the left, leading up to the first last 10 minutes of the call of conversation going on between me about maybe some last minute thing I need to take care of as opposed to actually jumping in on the call. Um, and it goes into my second point because if I do arrive late, I see that the integrity is compromised and also the effectiveness of me being present. So really things that you mentioned also in these, uh, in the 10 bullet points about being present, a lot of that can be, uh, most of these bullet points have an effect by virtue of not being on time. So I take you up on that challenge and looking forward to seeing you five to 10 minutes before the call next week. Thank Yay, you. and then we could do some private chatting. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank Good you. Job. All right. Thank you, Jason. All right, Benita, you're up. I had a uh, a giveaway the first time I participated in a giveaway, and it was for a book launch. I applied for two of them. A giveaway where you give away a freebie if somebody buys a book, and then they get all kinds of people's gifts. So. Anyway, I applied for two and got accepted to one, and that happened several days ago. So that that was interesting. It's another way to build your audience. Uh, do you have any comments or questions about our lesson today? Um, yeah, I, I uh, well, coming in early, that's an interesting one because I book things so tightly, and that's what I need to work with is is estimating better the amount of time that some things take but uh yeah no not particularly okay, okay then we'll move we'll move on um remember it, people will do what's important to them and so when you come early then it shows me that this is really important to you this training and then that makes me feel that i need to pour out even more and mm -hmm. And I'm not by myself. I mean, it, you know, other speakers and other uh, leaders will feel that way. So again, if you, the more you give, the more you'll get. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I really do encourage all of you to attend your meeting. Leave early if you have to other meetings. It's more important for you to uh, come early to the meetings that you really want the information. Because you, you just miss too much in the beginning. Okay, let's go. Thank you, Benita. All right, let's go to Jean. Clemmy, I guess Clemmy left. Okay, Jean, you don't have any laughing competition left anymore. We can't hear you. Make sure that you always unmute yourself. You don't want to unmute yourself. There. <laughs> I'm right. saying, what do I have to say? I'm so late. <laughs> can I say? But it, excuse me, because I'm late. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sure that from what I've gleaned and <laughs> notes since then uh, about get, getting able to connect with the others, you know, doing networking before. 
I've done Zooms in the past, but they've been classes and there was no demand to be on time. Uh, I've had Zoom parties, but I have not had the one on this level. So I, when I get to that level, maybe I learn to be on time. No, I'm going to be on time <laughs> or not there at all. <laughs> that's that's the worst. So I, I, you know, try my best to, you know, juggle all the things like everyone else here. And I respect everyone's time. I'm going to let you know that. So I'm just glad to be here, even though it, I was on the wrong. It's okay, G. And I was on the wrong. I was, I was on it. I won't even go there. What okay. has happened today? Okay. <laughs> I said, yeah, where, we, are they? where are they? <laughs> after five, so we need to wrap this up. But I just want to say, yes, being there is better late than never. But what <laughs> I'm talking about is patterns. Oh, I, I'm talking about patterns where you're always late. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about correcting. But no, it's better to come here late than never if you have something once in a while. Absolutely. I want you here. <clears throat> but again, I'm talking about patterns because people will do what's important to them. Yes. Right? So if you're always, always late, then I feel like this isn't important. Oh, no. You know, that kind of thing. Okay. So good. Good job, Jean. All right. Let's go to Luana. Luana. Wow. What a live you did today. Or was it yesterday where you wore that red? You did so good, mm -hmm. except it was about 45 seconds in before I heard a first word. <laughs> I did that three times before I got one to take. Oh, God. <laughs> That's why I said third time's got to be a charm. Well, you look fabulous, oh, boy. Thank you. look you. great. That I'm... red really looked good on you. If you thank haven't you. seen her lives, the um, People that are taking my live class are posting in Passionately Speaking that are members. So go and, and see, um, see Luana's live. Really good. All right. Go ahead, Luana. Yeah, I'll be posting another today. Uh, and I do apologize for being late, but I think I'm having some computer problems because I actually had to reboot this thing twice before I got in. And then it cut me out a few moments ago and it brought me back in. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on. There's some trouble there. But I do know that what I heard, I enjoyed. I missed the first five. I thought they were, what I heard was very important. But even more important to me was the questions. Uh, so what I'm going to do is prepare some questions because I have been on Zoom calls where there are Q&A and they're asked and nobody says anything, including me, because I but wasn't prepared to be asked a question. Right. And, so, and then I feel really bad for the speaker. So I am going to have, prepare me a list of questions and have them on my computer. So anytime I happen to be in one of those calls, I can just pull one of those questions up. Yeah, and remember, you can just say when it comes, when it comes to blank, when it comes to websites, whatever they're talking about, what, what do you find your, your clients have the biggest challenge in? What is the biggest challenge your clients have? Whatever, right? So you can just use that and insert whatever they're speaking about. When it comes to emotional intelligence, what do you find that your clients have the biggest challenge with? I mean, that's a perfect question. Yeah. And just use it over and over and over. It gets them talking and gets you in the limelight. And you can even say, remember, you can always introduce yourself really quick, like three seconds. You mm -hmm. say, hi, I'm RV Robinson. I am a speaker trainer. And my question for you is when you talk about websites, what do you find is the biggest challenge that your clients have or that your clients face? Boom. And I just got to sh you know, share with people I'm in the room. Without mm -hmm. being obnoxious, without going into a 30 second spiel, just real quick. My mm -hmm. name and what I do, boom. Yeah, that's right. really good. So take advantage of that, that stage. <laughs> I will. Oh, very quickly, I had set a goal for myself to do five speech speeches this month. I've already done five. Yeah, we're ready. And we are only on day four. Congratulations, Savannah. Yes. Yep. Nice. The, the target draws the arrow, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Always set those goals and you will make them. So good job. All Thank right. You. Okay. Well, we're going to end our call today. Thank you all for sticking around. I know we're a little bit after the hour and uh, it's time man, to get up, ma'am. Listen to me. Time, ma'am. No, it <laughs> is time. 
I don't know where that came from, but it is time to get out there and get those speaking engagements and speak, do like Luana did. She set that goal and she's already made her goal for this week. For the, is that your goal for the it was month? For the month. Month. Okay. So the I month. got a, I got a long ways to go. You need to raise the goal now. That's all. You need to set another target, raise the goal a little bit higher. Obviously, that was too easy. So let's try a goal of 25 for you. So 20 more speaking engagements for you, Lawana. All right. So pick up the phone, make those calls, get those engagements. And remember when you do speak, to always speak with passion. Good night, everybody. Thank you, CJ. Thank you all for joining us. See you next week. <laughs> Bye.